open the door. Fuse is blue. I'll have him fixed soon. Julie? Oh, Dr. Sorrell. Well, what are you doing here? Ooh, illness a ghastly night. <laughs> the storm is on, the lights are out. <laughs> Listen, I'm glad you're here. But, um, what I mean is, why? How did you know? Did, uh, Aline call you? Yes. Where is she? I think I'm going mad. You want a drink? No, thank you. Where is Aline? You know what you've come into? Walt Burgess night with the demons walking around. I can't be responsible for Aline and Lois. I wanted to. I meant to. But how can I? Are you sure you don't want to drink? No, thank you. Who could take charge of Aline? 24 years old, half the money in the world. And crazy. She's crazy. You're a psychiatrist, you should know. Where is she? There was a party. Everybody was laughing like, so many times. I got loaded like, so many times. You know how sometimes you get loaded very quickly, and other times oof, it takes all night. Jolene, I'm not here in the dead of night to hear about that. Where is Aline? I went to sleep. I dreamed. I saw Aline. I dreamed something awful. A mad, dreadful dream. I'll dream. You know I'm. Oh, oh! This is absurd. I'm too sophisticated for this. I really am. I'm not going to be frightened because the lights went on. Joe stoned again? She's asleep. Passed out, you mean? Be at the party tonight? No, I just got here. You ought to see the den. I took a peek. Must have been a real freak out. And they told me to clean my room. <laughs> coming. He was so old, he could hardly get up anymore. They were going to put him to sleep, only I wouldn't let them. He always comes to the parties. He liked getting drunk. What are we going to do with him? Just nothing right now. He can be buried in the morning. Maybe I'll leave it on. All right. You gonna stay around for a while? Do you want me to? All right, I'll be around. Poor Canute.
You know what you've come into? Walpurgis night with the demons walking around. you down in some cold, cold jail. And I'm not saying you have the key. I'm just trying, working to be me. Lean? I swear I don't. I found it. That's it. You knew her, didn't you? I rent the beach cottage from the Wileys. We met a few times. We heard that two hours ago. Mr. Richmond, it's like this. You don't have to talk, but you're right. If you don't know anything, why were you running away? Well, that. I just knew it wasn't a good thing for a black man to find a dead white girl. I panicked, that's it just came over me to run. Maybe it was a message from history. Hello? Dr. Sorrell? Yes? How do you do? I've been wanting to meet you. I'm Leela Barton. Oh, yes, of course. A friend of Aline's. You're a photographer? Yes. Well, it was shocking news. I'm still numb. Of course. Are you coming to the gathering? No, no, I wasn't invited. I came to see Loe. She's a love, isn't she? You knew Aline quite well, didn't you? I suppose so. If anyone really knows anyone. Sometimes we think we do. Oh, Edward. Hello. Hello. Dr. Sorrell has told me that he's not been invited. Don't you think he ought to be? Yes, of course. Please come in. Uh, yes, but in a little while, I have to see Loey first. Oh, yes. Well, the poor kid's taking it pretty hard. I think she's down by the barn. Oh, good. I like him. Louis. 
What do you want? Where are you? In here. Hi. What's the matter? Nothing. All right. Nothing's the matter. You just like to crouch in here by yourself. I'm returning to the womb. Oh. Can a friend ask why? I killed Aline. How did you do that? I'm rotten. Everybody thinks I'm so sweet. Boy, they don't know. I don't know either. How rotten are you? Tell me. Well, I made it happen to her. She was beautiful. I mean, with everything you know. I'm just a big bluff. It's not fair. How did you kill her? With magic. Magic? I called on Mulciber, Astroth, and Diabolus. And I commanded them to help me. And now she's dead. But I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. Where did you learn all this fascinating magic? From a book. Aline had it. And I thought it was just some sort of a game, you know, like you do just for yourself. Come on. Tell me, Loie, how was the party last night? I don't know. But once I thought I heard singing, but it wasn't. More like chanting, you know? I tried to listen, but I was too sleepy. I suppose you knew all the people who were there. I didn't go in. And I only saw Aline when she brought me in some hot chocolate. I don't really remember anything after that. I loved to leave. I really did. Of course you did. <laughs> Glenn, Carla, Elizabeth, Robert, Suzanne, Dr. Sorrell, everyone. We're just going to look at the news. Why don't you come and sit down? Well, we have to drink, Doctor. Uh, scotch, please. Thank you. Tune it up. Here it is. Excuse me. And to the tragic death of 24-year-old Aline Wiley, heiress to the huge Wiley fortune and popular member of the inset called the Beautiful People, Miss Wiley's body was found on the beach this morning below the cliffs near where she lived on a road ironically named Morning Glory Lane. Miss Wiley's body was identified at the morgue by her aunt, the former actress Miss Jolene Wiley, who lived with her. There you are, Joe. Oh, oh she good Lord, story. I look terrible. Did Larry Richmond ever come to the house, ma'am? Yes. Yes, I met Larry Richmond, but I, I cannot believe he'd have anything to do with it. The body was reportedly discovered by the folk singer Larry Richmond, who was held for questioning and then released when the coroner's preliminary report indicated that Elaine Wiley had been dead from six to eight hours before she was found. Wait a minute. Police were not able to offer any explanation as to why she was at the beach. The star-crossed Elaine Wiley lived through more than her share of tragedy before she died, Mother and father were killed in a private plane crash four years ago, and last year her husband of only a few months was killed in Vietnam. She was survived by her aunt and a younger sister. No funeral plans have as yet been announced. Hello? And more local... Yes, this is Jolene Wiley. Oh. Oh. Oh, but... All right. Thank you. The coroner's report... She took sleeping pills. It was suicide. Suicide? She killed herself. <laughs> oh, what a time to have here comes. Just hold your breath, love. I can't. Why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a while? Excuse us, please. I'm sorry, Doctor. I really wish I could help, but I don't see how I can. 
It was true, Aline and I were very close, but I didn't expect this. Nor I. I never would have thought Aline would want to kill herself. Perhaps she didn't know it herself. You know, everybody has a secret thought. Sometimes so secret we don't even bother to tell ourselves. Psychiatrists think they know a little more than most about secret thoughts, but I'm not sure we do. If that was Aline's, I didn't know it. How did she behave at the party, Miss Barton? How was she? Firstly, I would like you to call me Leela. Very good. And secondly, I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have some appointments at the studio. I do hope to see you soon. Dead serious, more serious than I even know how to be. I can't live like this anymore. I just can't. I haven't got the strength. Not now. Not alone. You're not alone, baby. I'm here. Listen. Just listen. I'm not so old, you know. I just wear this middle-aged body on the outside, but inside I'm really young. It's a great body, love. Don't knock it. It limps. Who cares? Everybody. Come on, Joe, it's getting better all the time. We're alike, you know, you and I. You're not so young either. <laughs> we both run after youth with, with pounding feet. We'll never catch it. <laughs> Maybe we both limp. So, you see, Edward, we need each other. Darling Joe, I know. Then marry me. <laughs> marry me. <laughs> hmm. I never thought I would say that. I'm sorry it came out so desperate. You know, when I was young, and the theater and the pictures, I didn't want to marry. No, I turned down a million proposals. I used to have my freedom and my career. Now, all I have is my freedom. Well, all right, you don't want to. Is it Leela? You love Leela? She's so beautiful. No, I don't love Leela. Darling Joe. Don't want to smile at you. Don't 
Don't want to cry at you. Don't want to scratch your back. Don't want the suitcase you pack. Don't want to break you, scare you. Put a lot of worry into your sweet soul. I'm trying. Trying to be working. Mr. Richmond? To be Yeah, me. what do you want? I'm David Sorrell. I'd like to talk to you. I've said it all, man. I'm sure you have, but uh, I'm not a policeman. I have no badge, no gun. I'm a psychiatrist. I was Aline's doctor. Kind of late. Yes, I know. May I come in? Yeah. Yeah, I dig. You want to know if you blew it? Mm, you did. You know, I've met cats like you before, when I was in jail. Rehabilitation, they call it. Never saw one of you dudes didn't need more than I did. I'm sure you're right. But as long as we're the ones who decide, I'm afraid you're stuck. Aren't you? Nobody can help anyone. Don't you know that yet? Yes, we can, if we want to. We have to believe it first. She came down there that morning, walking along the edge of the water. She had this sweet, graceful kind of walk. You know, like she wasn't touching ground. Like some of those tall, slim black ladies in Africa carrying a pitcher of water on their head. Someone you just love to watch. She had this laughing face. Like she knew everything was beautiful, and it wasn't, man. It, it, it wasn't. She asked me to come to her party that night, and I uh, said I had work, because I'd already decided I wasn't going to fall into that bag anymore. No, I don't rent the carnage. She gave it to me for as long as I wanted it. You know about me? Very little. I know you're a singer. You make records. That's right. I even got a golden record. That's what they give you when you sell over a million. Anyway, that was uh, before I got on the junk and got busted. I spent a year in jail, and I kicked it. Of course, you never really kick a habit. It's always there, isn't it? Yeah, that's... In the back of your head. That's right. So far, I'm clean. Anyway, I want to get back in business. And Aline uh, gave me the cottage so I could practice. One time, she kissed me and said I was beautiful. And she was beautiful. She wanted to love everyone. She kept telling people to love each other, you know? Like, like the flower children. Only she didn't mean just think it. She meant do it. She'd get all those beautiful people together and she made them swing. You know about that? Yes, yes. I do. told her it wasn't my bag. Funny thing is, the next day, she never seemed to know what I was talking about. She just forgot. You know, that, that stuff can really get to you. I mean, it grabs you. Like maybe you, you always wanted to do things like that. And afterwards, you crash. Way down. When you wake up, you don't know whether you did it or dreamed it. I mean, you want it to be a dream, because it just couldn't have been you doing all of that. That's why I didn't want to go to a party. Yeah, but you did.
There are things inside us. I mean, all of us. Wild things we don't know about. Demons. I mean, she, she could call out demons. Do you know what I mean? No. No, I don't. Incantations, mumbo-jumbo. Stuff that would sound stupid if you weren't with it. She turned us all on. I've got to get a beer. My mouth is all dry. Do you want one? Yes, please. Thank you. You know, it's far out. I, I dreamed, I dreamed I saw a murder. It was a bloody human sacrifice. I dreamed I saw this young guy. He had long hair and a beard. He was kind of saintly, all stretched out on the table. And he was smiling, like he really wanted it to happen. Aline had the knife. Then he was screaming, because he was all cut open. I'm going to pull myself together. smile. I don't want to smile. That's nice. Now you look up, Adam. I won't be but a moment now. Waldo, try and look sexier. Think of her. All right, think of yourself. Oh, that's good. Stand right in front of them, okay? That's really nice. Ooh. Now that's how to look sexy. Dr. Sorrell does it quite naturally. No comment. <laughs> would you like to pose for ads, Doctor? With you, it would be a pleasure. Okay, let's quit. I'll see what I have here, and if I need you, I'll give you a call. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, how do you like my studio? It uh, looks like you. How's that? Quite unique. Hmm. <laughs> Used to be a grocery store. On the warm nights, you can still smell the onions and potatoes. Doctor, I'm so glad you could come. I have this problem I want to discuss with you. Problem? That's a psychiatrist's best friend. Now, give me that. Lie down. And uh, tell me all about it. Well, I've been working hard all day, and right now I would like to hear the sound of ice and a glass of gin and bitters and the pleasant conversation of a very romantic-looking doctor. I think I can squeeze that into my schedule. But can you solve my problem? Now, that depends entirely on the problem. It's there. The bar. Well, this must be how you're used to seeing people all day long, lying on their backs, blurting out their little panics. Yes, usually, when my patients insist on being Freudian. And you, you sit behind them, out of sight, so that you can laugh without their seeing you. Exactly. That's the human comedy. Much better than a play. Oh, you're interested in the black arts? I'm devoted to them. I'm a witch. I'm not surprised. Everybody loves black magic, don't you? If Louis is interested in such books, demons... Malseba, Astaroff, Diabolus. Shh, shh, shh. We don't want to call them. It's much nicer being by ourselves. I like your ring. Yes. I've had it for ages. Why didn't you tell me that you were at Aline's party? What makes you think I was? My own witchcraft, perhaps. Well, when you asked me that day in the den, I couldn't think of any natural law that says that I must always tell Dr. Sorrell the truth. Is there one? None at all. Tell me, Doctor, do you always tell the truth? Are all your motives so virtuous and your thoughts so pure? Yes, very pure. 
always. You psychiatrists are very bright, but sometimes you think you have this shining, gleaming ring above your heads, like a halo. But you see, there's nothing there. Oh, but I've got one. I don't use it anymore. It's strange. We're so familiar. Like old souls. Tell me, David, are you an old soul? Very old. Did you know that all souls speak to each other ever so softly like lovers whispering in the night? I know. Old soul. What happened at Aline's party? Oh, David. It was a party. Aline is dead. You know, I thought I knew her better than anyone, but I never thought she would do that. Do you like him? That's Elmer. I never do anything without consulting him. He certainly looks like an old soul to me. Yes? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you know that Elmer's other name is Priapus, the ancient god of lust, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, lust. Isn't that the mean little word that deeply repressed people use to describe simple, unrestrained pleasure? But then you would know more about that than I. Because I'm repressed. Because you're the doctor. Okay, Maura, that's enough. I want to know where Canute's grave is. He's safe, miss. Oh, yeah, sure. Where is he? When someone dies, they forget everything. You place a marker on his grave and speak to him. Even a dog, he will remember and come back and walk the night. Cut it out, will you, Mora? I want to know. Do you know whose place this is now, Mora? Yes, miss. Well, it's mine. And I can do anything I want, see? Mora! Hi! You gonna drive Aline's car all the time now? I just keep it in shape for you, love. When you learn how, you'll drive it yourself. Meanwhile, we just can't let it sit and go to rust, can we? No, we can't, can we? Chloe? Brought you a present. Why? Oh, because it's Tuesday. Because I like you. For reasons like that. Take a look. Pretty great, huh? Mm. How'd you pay for it? Was Aunt Joe's money or mine? Louie, well, can't we make out better than this? Why should we? Well, for one thing, it looks like I might become your uncle. Joe and I are getting married soon. Figures. Then you'll be my guardian with Aunt Joe. Sure, if it's all right with you. Wow. Mara! Put that in the attack room.
the tapes of Aline indicate nothing, absolutely nothing that even hints of suicide. Must have been a sudden decision. Brought about by what? I know what you're thinking. You're trying to suggest a little sorcery, the black arts. Well, amateur stuff, I dare say, but I'll tell you something. Even an amateur delving into something he doesn't understand can possibly call up something dark and unexpected. Mm. Satan himself? Perhaps. By the way, I have that uh, literature that you asked me to get. Modern witchcraft and black mass celebration. Would you like to pick them up on the way home? The answer may well lie there. Did you say that Jolene Wiley was frightened by what she called her nightmare? And Larry Richmond had a nightmare too, involving um, human sacrifice? Dreams of an ex-dope addict. And anyway, if there was a murder, where is the body? Well, bodies have vanished before now. Yes, but not necessarily by magic. Oh. Well, anyway, Larry Richmond is coming to see me tomorrow. I'll find out then what was dreamed and what wasn't, with a little psychiatry, not a sorcery. Oh, it's still sorcery, my boy. White magic, black magic, they're just the same, except perhaps with the results. I've studied the black arts with your guidance, <laughs> Professor Snowden. They exist, but the supernatural is very unlikely. And if there is something that looks like it, it's probably very natural with a natural explanation. We see what we want to see. If we want to see demons, we can. But what are demons, after all, except our own desires? in disguise. Yes, indeed, my prized pupil. Thank you. Now, tell me about the Black Mass. Well, it isn't really very much connected anymore with mere blasphemy, devil worship, and that sort of thing. Very few people still believe in a devil with horns and a tail and a, and a toasting fork. We've all become too marred for that. Yes, indeed. If God's dead, I expect he's taken the devil with him. Mind you, it's all based on the Dionysian celebrations of ancient Greece. Do what thou wilt shall be the only law. Even murder? Do you think uh, Aline could have become involved in something like that? It's possible. Vice is addictive, you know. It's like drugs. Once you begin, you want to go on. And the search for the ultimate thrill could lead to murder. Do you prefer that explanation to witchcraft? It's more acceptable for a rational mind. You know, I think you tend to rationalize too much, my dear David. Do you always rationalize your women? Do you rationalize Leela Barton, for example? No, she has this elusive quality. A look of amusement, as if she knows everything. And is laughing. Said Aruspice, Aruspice, videt et non redet. Non haruspice est. How's your Latin? Very rusty. It means if a sorcerer meets another sorcerer and doesn't laugh, then he's not a sorcerer. Hey, baby, why don't we go up to my place? What would you do when you got there? Take off my earrings, move near them, smiling wickedly. And then? And then... He'd start to kiss me, his face coming closer and closer. And then... Yes? And then I'd start to laugh because I could see all the pores in his skin. <laughs> oh, Leela. Hi, beauty. Ready to go home? <laughs> what are you made up for? Trick or treat? Oh, Leela, do I have to go now? I think you better, love. I have a lot of work to do. You better wash your face, too. Aunt Jo will flip out if I bring you home like that. She already has. Why don't you go with her? Why is she so difficult? Is she? I try to be friendly and just turns her off. Did she say anything to you? Well, perhaps you've forgotten the first rule of charm. What's that? Never do or say anything that prevents a woman from being lovely. Oh, come on. She's just a kid. Well, then perhaps your plans are showing. What plans? Well, now that Aline is dead and Loe inherits everything, Jolene will be her guardian for the next several years. All of a sudden, out of the blue, you want to marry Jolene. Even a child can understand that. She asked me. Did a Joe ask me? Because you're so irresistible. I'm not jealous. Perceptive of you, Edward. 
I, I don't understand you. You were the one that introduced me to Joe in the first place. You said... I know what I said, and I know you don't understand me. But I do know that Jolene is a very lonely, neurotic woman, and I know what you're after. But I really would like you to understand one thing, Edward. Be careful with Loey. Just be careful. I don't want to bury you. I don't want to make you sad. Take away the life you have. And I'm not asking you to set me free. I'm just trying, working to be me. I don't want to stare at you. I don't want to swear at you. I don't want, I don't want to steal your car. Show you, show you what you think you are. Darling Joe, you look beautiful. Lovely. Have you ever stopped to think of what a terrible life we lead? Stern, harsh, demanding, arduous toil in the fields all day without a single joy or pleasure. How do we stand it, love? Why don't we revolt? What's the matter? Why did you leave last night? You fell asleep. And I woke up. Oh, darling, you said yourself, for, for appearance sake, for Loie, I shouldn't stay here all night. Until we get married, right? Did you talk to the lawyers? This morning, Loie and I went to their office. And? I'll be Loie's legal guardian until she's 21. Great. They'll control the money and the investments, just as they did for Aline. Well, you didn't tell them about my shrewd eye, my uncanny business mind? You're so uncanny, you haven't got a dime. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I have fun. I bring joy. Okay, and that's a talent, too. And fun takes money. Would you rather have fun with the lawyers? You think too much of money. Well, when I have enough, I won't think about it anymore. Oh, come on, love. What's the matter? Have I done something? You haven't heard the news. What news? Uh, are we at war? Larry Richmond is dead. Edward, I don't like this. It's horrible. The fire just about got at the beach cottage. They found him still on the bed. The old story. He fell asleep with a lighted cigarette. He was found just lying on his bed. Yeah. He was an ex dope Maybe he went back on it. Maybe. Uh, when was his appointment to see you? This morning. What he said he dreamed could have happened. Perhaps he had to call it a dream because it was too shocking for him to be called real. Somebody wanted to kill him because he was coming to see you? I don't suppose you'd believe me, Sheriff, if I told you that there might be some witchcraft involved here? No, I don't think so. 
Well, perhaps you can find out if there's a report of a missing person, a young man, a hippie, probably, with long hair and a beard, with a biblical look about him. Yeah, hundreds of them. Yes, but this one might have been missing since the night Aline Wiley died. What's that got to do with anything? Well, he might be dead, too. What do you mean, dead? Well, there might have been a human sacrifice. <sighs> a what? And this young man might have been it. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll... Uh... Keep an eye out for which. No, I'll do that, Sheriff. You look for the young man. Everybody's the police. Nobody likes the police, but... but everybody's the police. Saddle him, will you, Maura? And give him some water. He's pretty cranky today. Why don't you, uh, you know, stretch out in the sun, relax for a little while? Mm, too much trouble to go and get a suit. Go without. Shut up, Edward. By the way, I'm expecting Dr. Sorrell. I don't like him dropping in whenever he feels like it. This happens to be my place now, in case you didn't know it. Well, sure, of course it is, beauty. You know, all I had to do this morning with the lawyers was tell them about you and what goes on around here, and I'd have gotten another guardian. I like you, Aunt Jo, but he's not my guardian, even if you marry him. And don't call me beauty. Edward, I want to go away. We will, darling Joe, soon. Very soon. No, to tell you the truth, nothing's all right. I feel I'm all flappy. Flappy? Yeah. You know, flap, 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 like um, ducks flying up when you scare them. It's getting really scary. I mean, really. I've been having these dreams lately, and boy, are they ever weird. Wow. That sounds bad. You're not kidding. You can risk telling me one, I think. Well, oh, wow. I can't. Of course you can, of course. Try it. OK. Well, I dream I'm with lots of men. Really. I mean, seriously. 
Well, how could I dream it like that? I mean, I don't even know. Well, I do know, but... Well, I don't because... Well, I've never, um... How do you feel about it in the dreams? Well, I don't know. Do you enjoy it? Yes. But I don't want to, because when I wake up, I, I feel scared. And in my dreams, it's... It's as though I'm... I'm drunk or something, you know, all kind of strung out. But it's a lean I'm feeling. Did you ever actually see Aline doing this in real life? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Once I thought I saw her with someone. I didn't stay. And, well, then I guess I cried. Do you know why? Because I wanted to be like her. And I, I thought I never could. Well, I guess I'm not really very pretty. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm crazy, aren't I? That's it, isn't it? Looney Lowy. Oh. Oh. Sounds like the name of a volcano in Hawaii or something. Looney Lowy. Well, it runs in the family, you know. I mean, my mother wasn't really all together half the time. And I guess, you know, Aline was kind of far out. And look at that ding ling Aunt Jo. Hey, see if you can take this one. She's begun coming out at night now, like she's walking in her sleep. And she stands here, and she prays all by herself. I didn't even think she'd ever heard of God. And anyway, why come out here and pray? Why not pray in bed? Oh, boy, everybody's nuts around here, including me. And I'm getting all hollow-eyed, because I just don't want to go to sleep at night. I just sort of wander around. All right, we'll fix that. I'll give you a prescription. You take it when you go to bed. And you sleep, believe me. But, Louis, you have to help, too. Now, you're a strong girl, you have an iron will, use it. And you'll never have these dreams anymore. And, Loi, we're all crazy, more or less. So it's not just a loony Loi. Hmm? So sleep soundly. Did you enjoy the performance? Most of it. What do you mean, most of it? Well, I was thinking. Of what? Of you. <laughs> what a delightful coincidence. Not so coincidental, David. We are familiar. We really do know each other from another place. From a previous life, you mean? The old soul, Fiora? We're all old souls. It's just a matter of remembering. We were lovers once, a very long time ago. Would you like to have a drink, old soul? Just because we'd like to have a drink? Absolutely. That's the best reason. Just because we want to. I'll get some ice. Be right back. Isn't he beautiful? Remarkable. He looks like a saint. He looks like he walked right out of Galilee. Mm. It's fascinating. I wish I could remember his name. Where did you find him? Why well, didn't Aline did? She was always picking up lost homeless people, like poor Larry. It was her thing. She loved to take him to her parties. Well, he was there the night Aline died. Who? Well, this young man. Well, I don't know. There's so many people milling about. I really don't remember the last time I saw him. Oh, you don't remember seeing him there? David, what is it? What's the matter? Well, it's difficult to explain. It's something Larry Richmond told me. And what was that? Well, he called it a nightmare. He didn't seem to be sure whether he dreamed it or lived it. What? That a human sacrifice took place the night Eileen died. 
Human sacrifice for what? Leela, you must know that there are certain cults, certain demonology games. You mean calling up the devils? Calling on poor, tired old Beelzebub? Well, there might be a dance or two still left in the old boy. Oh, David, all that went out with the Middle Ages. And those were the frightened ideas of people who couldn't face the truth that humanity is evil. They tried to burn the evil out of themselves by burning those poor women they called witches. Humanity is evil. You believe that? Evil? What is evil? Unhappy, frustrated women dreaming of nightly visitations. Uptight men dreaming of the same thing. The succubus and the incubus. David, is the need for love so very evil? You didn't answer my question. You didn't answer mine. David, there is no supernatural. And there are no demons. But there is magic. All sorts of magic. Like astrologers guessing right. Cards for telling fortunes. Even love is magic, isn't it? You really do have to have everything explained, don't you? Now do you know everything? Almost. Leela. Good night. I have to go. Shall regret look sorry? I am. Believe me. Hear me, for I am your daughter, Leela. Intercede for me with the Great One and ask that he whom I desire be brought swiftly to me. O oh, Lucifer, my father, hear me.
okay, but what's so groovy about being good? I mean, who wants to be called sweet little Loie? And why be square on purpose? Miss all the fun? That's dull. Leland says it's all hypocrisy anyway, and that no one's really good, they just pretend to be. And they live on tranquilizers and booze to keep from blowing their minds. Lila says it would be a real swinging world if people would just do unto others and forget the rest of it. You sound like you're seeing a great deal of Leela. Yeah. She's out there now in your outer room waiting for me. She is? You like her a lot, don't you? Oh, yeah. She's great. She's got this beautiful body laugh, you know. It just breaks me up. <laughs> I mean, you're just not the same after you know Leela. She doesn't pretend a lot of stuff, you know, like, oh, Loie, you mustn't say that, and you mustn't do that. Well, that's really what everybody says and everybody does. Yeah. What about your dreams, Loie? Nothing. Still having them? No. Those are really groovy pills you gave me. I sleep great. Honest? Yeah, honest. All right. We'll have another session tomorrow. Okay. That all? No, it is not all. Now we'll say hello to Leela. She really digs you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hello? Hello, David. I hope you have some time today. I want to show you something. I'll have a moment this afternoon, at 2 o'clock. Well, that's lovely. I'll pick you up. What are we going to see? We might call it a resurrection. See you at 2. Bye. Cemetery. Uh huh. Well, I'm fascinated, but why? Well, you remember the young hippie who asked about the one with the long hair and the beard? Yes. Well, I've located him, and you were right. He's in a grave. His name turns out to be Chris. Go see. What's happening? How are you doing? Great. Oh, uh, Chris, this is Dr. Sorrell. Hi. Hello. He was a friend of Aline's. Oh, yeah? She was really beautiful, man. I sure dug her. Guess everybody did. Sure sorry when I heard she overdosed. We haven't seen you for a while. We thought you'd vanished. Uh, it's beautiful out here. Get to be by myself, with nature. There are always lots of flowers. Can even be stoned if I want. Nobody bugs me. I guess I kind of dig Chris. No comment? I don't think I have one. And there he was, alive and well, and at the bottom of the grave, which somehow destroys our theory. <laughs> of course. Now let me tell you what I've discovered. There is a cult called Capricorn, whose symbol is a goat figure, which is the representation of Satan, of course. Edward Bolander is the administrator, organizer. It's an exclusive organization, hard to find, difficult to join, pretty expensive when you do. They hold their gatherings at different wealthy homes, rotating as usually they're somewhat morally relaxed, so to speak. So to speak. <laughs> they celebrate a ritual black mass, apparently only in the spirit of good, unclean fun. Usually nothing happens, just frighten themselves. Pretty harmless. Now, your friend, Leela Barton, attends from time to time, but isn't known as a principal. I would have thought she was the very soul of it all. She's quite mystifying. Sometimes I think I've said a little snare, and she appears to walk right into it. And then, right out again. <laughs> you're certain you're not confusing witchcraft with bewitchment? I'm not so old that I can't remember how it feels to be enchanted. It still happens. I merely do less about it.
David, I think we're supposed only to glance, not stare. Harry, when all men wear tuxedos, they look somewhat alike. Do you agree? How did we arrive at this revelation? But we are used to seeing men in tuxedos, and therefore we can discern the differences between them. It seems you're trying to tell me something. I certainly hope so. And yet, young men with long hair and beards resemble each other too. But since we are not so used to seeing them, we don't see the differences between them, if you see what I'm driving at. Oh, I do, a very clear, astute piece of logic. And probably dead on the mark. Now, Harry, I have an absurd question for you, but I must ask it. Carry on. Do you think it's possible for someone to gain power over another by using a photograph? In the same way that uh, wax images are used, a kind of voodoo doll. Well, wax images work because the people in whose image the dolls are made know about it and believe it's happening to them. It's really auto-suggestion. But, but what if the person isn't aware of the image and feels the pinprick just the same, falls into another's power, loses his own will? Oh, oh, oh. Take an extraordinary powerful witch for that one who gathers souls for Satan. We'd have to find the source of that power before we could stop her. I'm presuming I know who you mean. But who's the victim? Ah! What's the matter with you? I don't like this. There's something wrong. I've never known Lloyd to be thrown from a horse before. Calm down, darling Joe. She's not really hurt. She could have been killed. Well, nobody rides that much without a fall once in a while. I don't want Lowy hurt. Well, neither do I. What are you talking about? You act as if I had something to do with it. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just madly worried. Here, love. Have this. You'll feel better. And do be careful what you say in front of Sorrel. I want to leave. I want to get out. I mean it. Sure, love. Eileen got out. So did Larry Richmond. Cool it. How is she? She's all right. Dr. Sorrell wants her to have some orange juice. Yes, I'll get it. What's the matter? You nearly made yourself a nice little fortune, didn't you? What are you talking about? <laughs> it was an accident. You fool. Are you taking these pills? You don't look like you're getting enough sleep. Yeah, yeah. Is that the truth? Well, what's the difference? What if I dream? Doesn't hurt anybody. No, just you. Oh, who cares? Yeah, darling. Here's your orange juice. I don't want it. Oh, come on, sweetie. It's good for you. Energy. Look, I don't want it. Now, would you leave me alone, you old drunk? Oh, Lowy. She didn't mean it. Yes, I did. Don't try to make me good. I'm not good. <sighs> she sounds just like a lean.
to forgive me. Okay, Doc, but I don't get it. What did that accomplish? You can take off all that hair now, Frank. You look dumb. So? I think if you dig under those flowers, you'll find the body of the missing young man. Yeah? How come? She just told us by the way she just behaved. <laughs> I don't know about this. I... I got no warrant, I got nothing. It's there. It's there. I'm sure of it. All right. Here, hold this. for the body of a young man. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. What young man? The young man who was here at the party the night Aileen died. You're crazy. Why don't you go and look? Yeah, I will. Will you tell me what you think you're doing? Who are you? Edward Bolander. A friend of the family. Right. And I'll speak for Jolene Wiley and ask you to clear out of here. It's there, Sheriff. All right, let's go. What is this, Nazi Germany? Yeah, okay, there is a body down there. Yeah, go on, dig for it. And tomorrow, I'll tell the press about the stupid sheriff who came out here in the middle of the night to dig up a dead dog. <sighs> Go on, dig! Dig! All right. Would you mind clearing out of here? 
And would you mind not coming back here anymore? I think we can do without you. Sorry, I was mistaken, Jerry. Yeah. And I'll probably be sued. Oh, I'm not wrong about the body. I'm wrong about the place where to find it. Don't call me, Doc. I'm not listening to any more dreams. I'm sorry. Sometimes I think they ought to build a wall around this whole part of the country. Call it an asylum. Well, what were they doing? Why was Dr. Sorrell here? I don't know. Well, I'll find out. No, no, I don't want you to go out there. Why not? What are you so scared about? Look, relax. Where you belong? Come on. I'll make a grave for you someplace else. Ah! Take it easy, beauty. What's the matter? Calm down, calm down. What are you doing out here? It's in there. There's something else in there. It was a hand. Oh, well, let's go see. Edward. He's dead. Hey, uh, what killed that one? Any idea? No, he looked like he had a stroke or something. Yeah. Hey, what's his name? Bolander? Right. How about that one? We don't know. He's been dead for a while. Well, what happened? We don't know. Hey, look, all I want is some information. I've told you all I can. He was someone Aline met on the beach. I never knew his name. After the party was over, Edward wanted him to go. There was a fight, I guess. The young man had a knife, and Edward took it away from him and killed him. I don't think he meant to. And then he buried him in the garden. Why didn't you tell us this before? I couldn't. I was afraid. Edward threatened me. And I was not just afraid for myself, but for Lowy. the hand. 
hand under Canute. And I was going to run or yell or something, and, and then Edward grabbed me. And he hurt me, and I was really scared. And then, and then he kind of had a fit, you know? And he grabbed at his throat, and he started choking and everything. And I ran away. Oh, I don't know what happened. I, I just wanted to get away. Okay. I think if that is all, we'd better leave her now. I've given her a sedative. Okay. Well, you were right. Except about that demonology stuff. Bolander and the kid had a fight. Bolander killed him. It's as simple as that. That makes sense. If any killing makes sense. Uh, I mean, police sense. Well, I guess I should say thank you. But I'm not sure what for. And I don't want to know. Lloyd, there's something you didn't tell the sheriff. I'd better know. It's important. Loy, tell me. No. No, you'd have to put me away. I can't. I can't. All right. Sleep. Jolene. What you told the sheriff wasn't the truth. Oh, yes. No, it was, I swear it. Lois's life might be in danger. You have to help now. You have to be strong. But I... Edward didn't kill that boy. Aline plunged a knife in him. It was a black mass. It was Leela that made us pray to the devil. It was like we were hypnotized. And there was a, a goat figure with eyes that glowed. Oh, I was so afraid. You stay with Lloyd. Hmm? Don't leave her. No. Don't leave her.
was you. It was you who saved Chloe from Bolander. Edward was a small man, a small, greedy man. Would you like some coffee, David? You've had a very busy night. No, thank you. This isn't exactly a social call. No? No. Then what is it? I know what happened, Leela. You forced an amateur black mass into the real thing. You brought it to a real human sacrifice and had Aline do it. That's why she killed herself. She couldn't face what she had done. I didn't want her to die, David. I know. But you thought you had control of her, that she had no will of her own left, just as you're doing with Louis. No will and no conscience, like you. David, your halo is showing. Yes, I've put it on again. I'm sorry. I am too. And Larry Richmond's death wasn't an accident either. The police said it was? Yes, but the ashes of his photograph are probably there in the fireplace. And Leela, please release Louis. And if I don't, what will you do, David? I think you broke the rule. You're capable of love. There is no power in evil if you love. I love a little. Never thought I could. Never thought it would happen to me. Yes, I love. And you, don't you? Yes. David, I knew we were old souls meeting for a second time. We must stay together now. We can. We must. We could live so gloriously, live so many different lives together. Oh, David, the world has always been ruled by Lucifer. Acknowledge him. That's all you have to do. Just call his name, my love. Next time, my love, perhaps in another life. Mm -hmm.